Click, click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and I'm here in Chinatown. Now it might not look like Chinatown, but it is. It's uh, my friends over at uh, Studio 126. Thanks uh, Anna and Ryan for letting me use your space here. I helped out and worked here in the summer for a couple of months and I had a great time. They're right on East Pender, so it's where it's at here in Chinatown. There's a sneaker shop across the street. There's El Cartel down the block. There's the shop, Motorcycle Guys, just around the other side. A couple of art galleries. So this is where it's at. And I thought I would do my unboxing video. So I've been doing a lot of these unboxings, but this is the unboxing of the Fujifilm X70. Now, like the X70 uh, pre-production that I had, I had to almost beg to get it because they said, uh, there's not a lot of them in Canada, and it wasn't that it wasn't that close to production yet, so they didn't want me to review it. But I begged and pleaded, and they sent it to me. And so a similar thing happened with this uh, unboxing. Uh, there was a last-minute firmware update, and so they said they cannot send me an unopened box because they have to update the firmware. And I begged and I pleaded, and I said, please, please, please send it to me. I'll do the firmware update myself. They said, okay, as long as you do it right away, you can have the, un, the unopened box. And guess what? I forgot the memory card firmware update at home. So um, I don't think it's gonna explode if I shoot without it. So let's see what happens. So this is it, the X70. Now, when I looked at it, the first thing I noticed was it said black. And two years ago, if you remember, male, me and, uh, me and uh, Kale Friesian, he got the black, the X100 and I got the silver one. And I'm like, oh, I want the black one. And I was trying to trade with him and he's like over my dead body. So I ended up like living with the silver one. And over time, I actually now, I kind of like the silver version. So um, I gotten so used to it. I think maybe Fuji remember that I was always begging for black. So they ended up sending me the black and I wish it was the silver one. So I'm such a complainer. So this is the black version. Um, it actually says editor sample on it, but it is an actual production model because it has a serial number on. So let us start here with the unboxing. Let us begin. Now one of the big questions that everyone was so concerned about, and maybe I'll talk about it now or maybe I won't, but they were concerned about what country this is made in. So to start off, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure because it says on the outside of the box, this is made in China. I'm not gonna say anything right now. Let's just continue on with the unboxing. All right, and don't unlike my video just because it's made in China. That makes no sense. You're liking the video, the content, all right? So here we go, unboxing. Why am I struggling with this? All right, here we go. So actually, this is how I got the X70 before. Like, it wasn't in the black box. It was a white box, so they do put the X on there. Extra stamping just for the logo, so that's, that's cool. So here we go. Like all unboxings, the first section is always very boring. Uh, manuals, didn't you find a couple of years ago, more and more brands stopped printing these things out and they just gave you like a CD to, um, to download and not have a printed copy. But I really like having a printed copy because there's sometimes there's obscure features that make no sense when you look at the menu. So this thing will, if you have it with you, I'm just looking at this now. Yeah, it's very, you can see that it's very concise. As it goes into the menus, it shows you and it gives you a whole sentence explaining what each one of these features means. So this is good. So keep this on yourself when you shoot. Put it up to the side. All right, so you will get the standard USB to whatever it is, micro HDMI or whatever it is as a, as a charger as well as a um, way of connecting it to your computer so you can transfer files across. It's USB 2 though, so it is slower than just taking the card out and popping it into a USB 3 card reader. So you get one of these, and I like these. I don't know what you guys, but I like these, um, these mini wall chargers. They are, so basically, you put it in here like this, and you plug this USB connector over here. The reason why I like these is because Man, I'm getting older. I gotta put this thing further away from my eyes. It is, it is a converter, so it goes from 100 to 240 volts. So you can go to countries like Hong Kong that have the 240 volt, or Japan that's 100 volt, and North America is I think like 115 or 120. But also uh, the fact that 
I think this is like a one amp output. So you can actually charge your iPhone or other cameras. Make sure you double check the amperage though, but I pretty much use them interchangeably between brands. It doesn't really matter. So I have two or three of these lined up on a power bar and I don't really care if it's a Ricoh or a Fuji or an iPhone. I just plug it in and start charging it with the chance of explosion, but that's just me. So I like these kind of chargers. A dedicated battery charger is nice though. Um, I do have a dedicated charger as well, but um, well, I just do, so. Anyways, brand new battery, and I can tell, I can tell this, everything's wrapped, so thank you, Fuji, for trusting me uh, to do the update, which I will not do right now because I forgot the card. Uh, these straps, some people like them, some don't. Um, I'm glad that they give you one, I guess, kind of. But then if you're really into straps like I am, like I'm into anything, like, um, like I love belts. Uh, I have tons of belts. I love, I play guitars. So I love all the different types of guitar straps. I love watches, so I buy tons of different watch straps. So I'm a strap kind of guy, a strap connoisseur. And even now I brought two different straps with me um, to decide which one I'll put on once I do the unboxing. So as a strap guy, these things are kind of like mediocre for me, but some people, you know, they, they're not strap people and they don't really mind that it's kind of vinyl-y. You know, it's kind of a, you know, it's not leather or anything. That premium Fuji stuff does have the leather straps, like the X-Pro2 and the X-T1, I think the X-T1, or maybe it's just a graphite silver version. But anyways, this is just kind of the cheaper version. It is nice as a freebie style. I've seen some that are just, simply horrible so at least you get one of these and then what's left over is pretty much the camera so let's um let's take this out i'm gonna leave the strap in here leave the charger in here i'm taking the okay what else is in here though uh i don't care about this stuff uh that's it for this i'm gonna just tidy up someone had complained saying i seem messy so here how about this not messy clean there you go so that's the box if you even care look at the box all right that's what you've been waiting for fujifilm sticker so it's sealed thank you again fuji for not opening it up and trusting me oh man this is really tight knife all right Man, I'm bad at this. I'm not as bad as Casey Neistat. I don't destroy everything I open up, but okay. So here we go. Ah, fresh. Yep, it has that new smell. Ah, look at that. So it is black and it has that cap that I mentioned um, that it looks sexy, it feels sexy, but personally, I like putting caps in my back pocket and it hurts when you sit on these things. And it is, it is the same size as, it is the same, so this is the X100. It is the same size, right? So maybe I'll just pretend that it's silver and put this on here like that, so there you go. This is brand new, everything is brand new. You pop the battery in here. I find that the Fuji batteries, you can actually put these things in backwards. So this is the right way because I looked at the contacts, but if you go the wrong way, it still locks in. So hopefully Fuji can figure out a way of doing it so that, I mean, it's funny because there's one corner kind of rounded. You think that that, they would round the inside so you can't put it in backwards, but you can. So always look at where the contacts are there and then make sure that the contacts line up in there. So let's pop this in here and let's turn it on. There we go. I love seeing that. You can just do a reset. Whenever I get a sample camera, it resets anyways, but knowing that no one else has touched it, uh, it's great to have it like this. Um, I'm not gonna really go through all these things and too lazy, um, but let's just make sure everything feels right. So this is, hey, actually, you, want, you can even look at, um, there you go, you can look at my setup here. I'm using the BitPlay case with the wide lens on my Manfrotto tripod. Can you see that? I don't even know if that makes, there we go. There you go. But if you do wanna use it in selfie mode, uh, you can easily do so. I think more functional is when you're shooting straight up ahead like this, if you're doing building shots, 
or if you're shooting on low angles, imagine like snowboarders, skateboarders, um, even shooting at low angles just for a change of perspective, it's nice. This is set at a 18.5mm uh, uh, focal length on an APS-C sensor, which means it is about a 28mm equivalent. So um, I like it. I mean, I've been comparing it a lot with my Ricoh GR. So in terms of size, I've been getting a lot of people talking about the size. You can still see uh, they're very similar in dimensions, but the Ricoh GR has its own self-closing lens cap, which helps it keep it more compact. Where the Fuji, you always, you always have to put some kind of thing on it. So it is thicker, but you do have the articulating screen on the back, which uh, is very useful and functional. And the X70 is 100 grams heavier. Right. So, uh, and also this has the proper lugs. So I like using the strap lugs. Some guys don't because it infringes on the fact that it makes it a little bit bulkier. So um, in terms of being compact, this is still, even though we're talking like millimeters in size and visually it might look like they're the exact same size, but in person holding it, um, this is definitely more compact. You can fit it into a medium tight front pocket pants where this one, you cannot, you gotta have baggy MC Hammer pants for this to fit in, or like a big jacket. So um, so that's the comparison with the Ricoh GR. I did bring other cameras, because I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, how does it compare to this with that. The X100 and the X70, which one should I get? So you know that basically internally, this processor and the sensor is exactly the same. The major difference, uh, other than the size, because you know, it is going to be bigger on the X100, even though it's not much heavier. It's basically, you're going to get a viewfinder with the X100. If you do not care about using a viewfinder, I don't have time right now to go over the benefits of shooting with one, but if you don't, if you don't care about it, like, let's say you're coming from a smartphone and you just want something better than a smartphone, and you don't care about the viewfinder, then forego the X100T, save yourself three, 400 bucks, and get the X70. Um, for those of you that really like using it. I mean, before, as I mentioned, I was choosing between these two cameras as an EDC for myself, and I chose this because it's smaller, and I love shooting with the viewfinder, but I decided not to use it. But um, if you're choosing between these two, and also the fact that this has an articulating screen, and if that's a big part of your photography, the X100 does not have that. Another one is people have been asking me, other than the X70, how about the X-T10? And I don't really want to compare the X-70 with the X-T10. Very different cameras. This is the X-A2, which I have yet to do a review because I'm not really decided on if I like it or not. Um, I showed it on my original first impressions. It does have a, I think they call it a 175 degree selfie screen, but you do have to pull it up. But the reason why it's similar is because both of these don't, they don't have viewfinders. And of course the X70 is still a little bit more compact. And I have the the, um, the 27 mil pancake lens on here, but you know, these are both jacket pocketable. And actually this camera does well. Fuji recently talked about this camera saying that this does very well in South Asia. And I think the country that this sells the best in is actually Thailand. And what they found is a lot of uh, Instagrammers or girls, especially that do social media, they like the XA2 because it's compact and it fits in their purse. So um, if you like compact and small, but you want interchangeable lens, the XA2 is actually a really good um, alternative to the X70 if you can live without a viewfinder. Another one I want to quickly compare with is the X30. Um, this is cheaper than the X70, sensor is much smaller than the X70, but this does have a zoom and it does have a viewfinder. And I actually like this because on most of my reviews when I do product shots, I actually use this. If I even show you here very quickly, um, you can even see right here, I mean, my X8, my X Pro 2 review, a lot of my reviews, I, I use the uh, X30. It's a great camera to do product shots on it, but if you can, live with the smaller processor, the two thirds inch processor, 12 megapixels. This is actually a great camera. I wish that hopefully Fujifilm will see that, there, that there's gonna be a huge demand for the X70 and more and more people will be looking at the X30 or the replacement, the X40. It should, they need to upgrade the sensor. Uh, even if it means going to that 
one inch sensor that now everyone seems to be using. That's become the new enthusiast size sensor that enthusiasts are willing to, uh, in terms of uh, less image quality, in terms of using micro third thirds or using APS-C, but big enough that they could do good video and images are decent quality. So hopefully X40, one inch sensor. So that is my unboxing. I was gonna do one more thing before I unbox, which is accessorize. So I'm going to pop on, just for fun, as I did in my other video, the lens hood, although the color doesn't match. Here is the lens hood off the, off the um, X100. Does it look weird? Look kind of goofy? Maybe just a little bit. So there's that. And then, of course, I love using the flash because this is a leaf shutter and I could flash sync up to, I think, maximum, if it's a mechanical shutter, one four thousandth of a second. I think that looks cool. And then just as my final joke, I showed a picture of it in my first impressions, but I didn't bring it with me, is the teleconverter lens X100. It um, makes the uh, X100 into a 50 mil equivalent. I don't know what it does to this. It probably is about a 40 mil equivalent. It will fit. I don't recommend it, don't do it. Please don't do it the pictures will look horrible because it's not corrected. These things are corrected in software to correct for the curvature, and this will look horrible. I just, as I mentioned before, I love Frankenstein in cameras, seeing what will fit into other things. So this is this ugly monster. I just think it's funny. If you have it just for fun, I mean, if you keep, if you crop it in and get rid of that vignetting, it'll probably look fine, but um, it's not really meant for this. Wait for the official teleconverter that will come out eventually. But there is that wide converter. None of those converters are out. Like all the accessories, the official accessories, the hood, the, te the wide converter, none of it's out yet. Fuji said by the end of the month, they should have it out to me. So I'm gonna do another review, not an unboxing, but a review and I incorporate all the different accessories. So that's it, I'm done. Unboxing finished. So thank you so much for watching. Again, come to you here from Studio 126 in Chinatown. Come down and visit. I'm down here all the time, once in a while. So thank you so much, and we will talk to you soon. Happy shooting. Click, click.